Hey, what's up, guys? Joel Benavides with the Block Squawk Podcast. It is the 28th of April, and it's about one minute past 10. And uh, we're going to get started with, uh, I guess we're on episode 48 right now. Uh, we're going to take a look at the market we've been looking at the last couple of days, and uh, we are going to uh, cover some news, do the squawk, uh, and then just uh, go over the chart, uh, Bitcoin chart, and maybe dance around charts. Uh, for a little bit. I usually only do uh, the TA on on Bitcoin from one exchange or another, but we're we're gonna. I think I, I think today I, I do want to uh, uh, branch out a little bit, even if it's just like a exploratory thing, um, just because ever since the podcast started, uh, I've just been kind of like experimenting with things here and there, but. I've never really like gone all in, and I think that's what episode 50 through 100 is going to be, um, and that will start within the month, uh, probably probably around next month. But we'll see how things work out. Um, Any hoot, uh, let's take a look at uh, uh, Coin360 right now, and uh, and we will move on from there. Please remember that if you're listening to this on YouTube, if you're listening to it on a podcast, you already got the disclaimer and everything. Uh, but if you're watching on YouTube or, or some other, because uh, this goes out through Anchor to a whole bunch of different platforms. Uh, so if you are uh, watching or listening and you have not received uh, the disclaimer, uh, be advised that, yeah, right here, uh, this is not financial advice uh, in any shape or form. My opinions are my own um, and all that. So uh, if you want to uh, follow me on social media, best way to do that is through Twitter. I'm on LinkedIn too and Facebook, but I'm not there a whole lot. So uh, you want to interact with me, uh, really the best way is on Twitter. Uh, So let's take a look at uh, the heat map and uh, we'll get on from there. Uh, So we can see right here, Bitcoin slightly green, Ethereum slightly uh, in the red, Ripple slightly green, Binance slightly green. All these are within a point or two. Most of them are underneath five points with the exception of Myota, which is up in the last 24 hours around 16.39%. And so, uh, but we're going to take a a good look at some market dynamics, especially with respect to like Ripple and Tezos. And uh, I think it's going to be really, really valuable information for you guys. Uh, I'm really excited to bring it to you. So uh, let me close out uh, the heat map because it can be... uh, can be cumbersome i'm not even clicking on it am i there we go uh so um coin paprika it's pulling the data off of uh, uh coin market caps so it's basically a coin market cap data uh we're gonna uh run through the top 20 here and uh and then we'll um we'll move on to the news like i was saying before uh coming in at 20th maker mkr trading at 537 at 22 that's down 0.13 points on the day up 7.52 points on the week 24 hour trade volume 12.5 million ontology ont and at 19 trading at 1 and 10 that's down 1.69 points on the day down 2.78 points on the week 24 hour trade volume 37 million neo neo by the same symbol in at 18th by market cap trading at 9 and 40 that's up 0.54 points on the day down 0.99 points on the week 24 hour trade volume was 200 3.3 million ethereum classic etc and at 17th by market cap trading at 5 and 64 down 0.4 points on the day up 2.93 points on the week 24 hour trade volume was 366.9 million tezos xtz and at 16th trading at 1 and 18 down 0.36 points on the day down 2.45 points on the week 24 hour trade volume 10.44 million 24 hour trade volume was uh i'm sorry <laughs> i totally totally fucked that one up um 24 hour traded volume was 5.4 million. Disregard that ridiculous um, figure there. Okay, moving on. IOTA by the symbol MyOTA, as we said before, in at 15th by market cap, trading at 30 cents, down 2.96 points on the day, up 16. Yeah, this is what we're talking about, up 16 points for the week. And 24 hour traded volume was 27.6 mil. Dash by the same symbol in at 14th, trading at 110 and 51, down 0.13 points on the day, up 1.26 points on the week. 24 hour traded volume, 225.8 million. BSV, Bitcoin SV, and at 13th by market cap, trading at 55 and 11, up 0.14 
points on the day and down 0.85 points on the week. 24-hour trade volume was 98.4 million. Monero XMR in its 12th, trading at 61 and 76, down 0.05 points on the day, down 1.43 points on the week. 24-hour trade volume was 89.9 million. And Tron TRX in 11th by market cap, trading at 2.3 cents, up 0.13 points on the day and down 0.34 points on the week. 24-hour trade volume was 447.1 million. Moving into the top 10 now, guys, top 10. Uh, starting out with Cardano, ADA in at 10th by market cap, trading at $0.06. Cents. That's down 0.47 points on the day, down 2.23 points on the week. 24-hour traded volume, $42 million. Stellar XLM in at 9th by market cap, trading at $0.09. Cents. That's up 0.7 points on the week and uh, down 0.74 points. I'm sorry, down 0.74 up 0.74 points for the day and down 0.74 points for the week. Sorry about that, guys. Um, Tether uh, in all its uh, news producing whatever uh, is in an eighth by market cap, Tether's USD team. Um, and uh, it is trading at 99 cents, of course, our, our favorite stable coin. Up 0.07 points on the day and up 0.27 points on the week. 24 hour trade of volume, 8.2 billion. As I've mentioned uh, many times before in this uh, stream podcast, uh, et cetera, uh, for those of you who don't know, the volume on Tether is up so high because it's basically our, uh, our do- dollar analog. So a lot of trading is done with it, not necessarily traded. Um, and because uh, because it's lack of volatility, so it's a it's a stable coin. So anyway, moving on, let's uh, finish out the top seven without any further interruptions. Binance Coin BNB in at seventh by market cap, trading at twenty two and seventy four, down zero point three nine points on the day, up zero uh, up one point zero eight points for the week, and twenty four hour trade volume was two hundred fifty six point five million. Litecoin LTC in at six by market cap, trading at 69 and 38, down 0.2 points on the day, down 2.8 points on the week. 24 hour trade volume was 2 billion. EOS by the same symbol, EOS in at fifth by market cap, trading at 4 and 72, down 0.13 points on the day, up 0.32 points on the week. 24 hour trade volume, 1.2 billion. Bitcoin Cash, BCH in at fourth by market cap, trading at 252 and 73, down 0.61 points on the day, down 4.03 points on the week. 24 hour trade volume, 567. 0.1 million XRP by the same symbol XRP and at third by market cap trading at 29 cents down 0.08 points on the day but up 0.96 points for the week 24 hour traded volume was 652.8 million Ethereum ETH ETH in its second by market cap trading at 157 and 37 down 0.01 points uh on the hour uh and uh oh man yeah I, I totally screwed that up. Sorry. Uh, yeah, I was giving you the hourly uh, the hourly uh, uh, change for XRP, uh, and I was actually uh, uh, meaning to give you the 24 hour. So XRP is actually up in the last 24 hours, uh, 0.96 points for the day, and then it's uh, down 6.41 points for the week. Ethereum ETH is down a quarter of a point for the day, and down 7.16 points on the week 24 hour trade of volume there was 4 billion and lastly of course bitcoin btc and at first by market cap trading of 5,298 and 59 that's up 0.67 points on the day and up 0.06 percent for the week 24 hour trade of volume was 8.8 billion sorry about that guys um i uh i was just so used to apogee cryptos format they don't have the hourly on there it's just the 24 and the seven day so uh, I will be sure to correct that and not repeat it. Um, so uh, let's take a look at Crypto Panic. Uh, Crypto Panic uh, is uh, is my news aggregator here, and um, I was looking at it earlier. There weren't too many like uh, pop out stories. There's some trending stories that we've also covered o- over the last couple of days. There's uh, one story I want to talk to you guys about in particular that I dug into a little deep because I found it fascinating and very applicable to trading. Um, and so we'll go over that here in just a moment. 
Uh, but let's cover the last couple of hours, shall we? So uh, let's see, an hour ago, uh, U.Today uh, put out an article stating that Bitcoin will die in 10 years, uh, but cryptocurrencies will continue to live on. Uh, and that's according to a European poll. Uh, one hour ago from uh, Eric Voorhees' Twitter account, the Federal Reserve is not currently forecasting a recession. And that's a quote um, from Ben Bernanke uh, in, uh, from January 2008. And so I guess he's pointing out there uh, that uh, even guys like Ben Bernanke can be incredibly wrong. Uh, uh, if you remember, if those if those of you who were pay, uh, around or paying attention in 2007, there was a lot of volatility. And so there was a big question about whether we we're going to have a recession or not. And I guess um, Ben Bernanke, who was the uh, chair of the Fed, I believe, uh, or the Treasury. No, I think he was a uh, chair of the Fed. Uh, he, uh, I guess he, he said this before uh, at the beginning of 2008. And as we all know, 2008 ended terrible. Uh, so there you go. Uh, two hours ago from CCN.com, IOTA Inc.'s game changing crypto power deal with Jaguar Land Rover. Jaguar and Land Rover. Um, two hours ago from the dailyhodl.com converting money the traditional way and the crypto way um, and uh, two hours ago oh it's another one about iota and jaguar uh, a lot of stuff about iota and jaguars uh, uh, a partnership and that's one of the things that you want to look at guys when you're doing like a fundamental analysis what kind of respectable partnerships are these coins forming so because IOTA is forming a, a partnership like that, uh, it gives them some credibility. Um, and, uh, and that's uh, stuff that people look out for, you know, in the equities market. Uh, so it uh, should be no different here. Um, that's all I'm gonna cover uh, from the recent news. Uh, let's take a brief, brief look at um, uh, trending stories over the last uh, day and then we'll move on we've covered this over the last couple of days before uh so uh, nine hours ago from btcmanager.com saudi british bank launches instant cross-border payment service based on ripple uh and uh, i usually don't cover ripple stories uh in depth too much uh but this uh this next one that we're going to be going into here in about a minute or so uh or a couple minutes is uh is based on ripple uh, but uh, on a few cryptos, I should say, but it's very, very exciting. Uh, I'm going to stop blowing that up. We'll cover it here in a sec. Uh, one day ago uh, from newsbtc.com, Bitcoin price reaction to Tether fiasco may signal strong fundamental strength. Yeah, so those of you guys who weren't following, um, there was this like uh, deal with like Tether and Bitfinex and a question as to whether Tether was actually backed. And uh, New York prosecutors get involved. Um, it's just, um, it's a big uh, debacle right now. So um, those stories are out there. I definitely, it's kind of like a couple days outside of the, 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 70, the 72 hour news cycle or 48 hour news cycle rather. Uh, but uh, you should go check it out. Um, let me see. Two days ago, we mentioned, yeah, we mentioned this, that BMW presents blockchain based odometer fraud prevention app. Um, so yeah, uh, two days ago, uh, major exchange E-Trade reportedly integrating Bitcoin and Ethereum for 5 million users. And, uh, and I talked about this. I was, um, hopefully TD Ameritrade gets on this. Um, but I, I thought about, I was wondering if, uh, pattern day trading rules are going to apply to people who are trading crypto on some of these exchanges. Uh, because uh, I know when you're trading equities on TD Ameritrade and 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 all those you know pattern day trading rules that's a that's a that's a rule for us here in the United States you can't trade make more than three trades uh, unless you're sitting on 25 uh, grand in your account so um, it shouldn't but um, and I promised that I was gonna uh, call e trade or go research it and I will I'll get to that and I'll let you guys know um, yeah, and down here, uh, so uh, Bitfinex covered 850 million loss using Tether funds. Yeah, so that's what what we're talking about. Um, highly syndicated, uh, uh, retweeted, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So big news, big news in the crypto market. But what I wanted to talk to you guys about 
um, is uh, this news article that came out and pointed me. Uh, so uh, on the Bitcoinist.com, uh, Bitcoinist.com uh, states new Binance report calls Ripple's XRP the best diversifier digital asset, um, and that there are clusters, uh, diversification clusters for. Um, for, not only for diversification guys, but if you think about it, um, you want those uh, diversifying crypto assets if you're going to be or go trying to to hedge one crypto against another. Uh, you want to find cryptos that behave uh, in contravention of one another, opposite of one another. And I've always said, I've said this on the stream before a while back. You probably have to go back to like episode 20 or 30, uh, but I had talked about how these certain cryptos um, seem to behave differently than the rest of them. And I, I cited them on previous streams. I cited uh, Doge is one. Uh, I may have cited XRP. Uh, not too sure about that. Uh, but then, uh, yeah, Doge was definitely one. Binance was another. And Tron was another. And uh, I felt uh, a little vindicated to see this. Uh, so, so this is the article. If you want to go check it out, it's on Bitcoinist.com. Uh, you just got to uh, search for XRP Best Diversifier on B Bitcoinist.com. But this is the actual report. So I went and I pulled up the report. It had this beautiful graphic right here um, on uh, the uh, divergence between cryptos on Binance. But, I mean, so, uh, sometimes these mechanics work across um uh, all, all corners of the crypto market and so you see this uh red line going right through it that's just a one-to-one -one diversification it's like uh that's where where the coins cross so you know you have bitcoin right here against bitcoin zrx against zrx right here and etc um and so and it looks like this because you're getting like the same number on one side of the line as you are on the other it's uh it's mirrored across this line uh because that's where, say, ZEC right here will cross with XTZ. Well, you're going to get the same thing right here, ZEC against XTZ. Um, so it's really mirrored, but the data is on either side of, uh, of this line. And so I was, um, I was, I was happy to, to, to see that I was a little vindicated uh, there. Uh, but, you know, if, if you're kind of risk off, uh, and you want to kind of stick to some of these more stable cryptos, you want to go with the higher market cap. And so fortunately, uh, Binance ranked these in order of um, average market cap across, I believe, the month of March, right? So, you know, if you're looking right here on the horizontal axis, Bitcoin has the highest market cap uh, of these 20, I believe, and then ZRX has the lowest. Right. So same thing here. Bitcoin down here at the bottom has the highest market cap. ZRX up here on the vertical axis has the lowest. So what I was focusing on mainly was right here, like the top 10, uh, bringing this up to like Tron and even into uh, Cardano and Monero, ADA and XMR. Um, so I, I'm really focusing right here, down here on this bottom, bottom corner. Um, you know where we're uh, where we're crossing, say, uh, uh, Bitcoin uh, against Ethereum, Ethereum against Bitcoin. You can see that. Um, so the the red is a one to one, so no change, right? And like the dark orange is like a high correlation. So say uh, Bitcoin and Ethereum uh, both have high correlation. I think it's like eighty seven percent correlation. In, uh, in in the price and the and the divergence on, on, on the market uh, on Binance yeah and where you have these these uh, blue and uh, even uh, very dark blue boxes is the area of least divergence like the highest um, if I'm not mistaken uh, the highest opportunity for for hedging uh, and uh, and so you can see right here clear as day XRP uh, running up against Binance and there there it is again so uh, Binance and XRP have a high divergence but if you look across this way Binance has uh, is one of the if not the highest um, uh, 
Uh, so uh, XRP, in other words, behaves very differently than the other cryptos. And where, where it's dark, I mean, it's got more blue than, than orange, in other words. So if you look at it, you know, I mean, uh, it's it, it, it behaves very differently than, uh, when you compare it to Binance. And then you get like a high divergence up against uh, like ZEC, Waves, and uh, Doge, right? And so when you look at Doge too, look follow Doge down, guys. Doge, um, it's a lower market cap coin, but it's it's it behaves totally different. So um, this is like fascinating stuff, guys. Uh, and that information is what you want to take now. Part of the reason why Doge behaves so differently, I believe, is because Binance doesn't keep it on their exchange. Like you can't buy and sell. Uh, Doge on Binance and I can't remember and they were calling it at the Binance effect, right? Like if if um, If the coin is out of Binance, which is a high-volume global exchange uh, Then you're gonna get a lot of that variation. You can see that right here. You can see Do Doge on the horizontal axis But you know you get a, a, a lot of um, uh, divergence from link uh, basic attention waves Tezos ontology even and I think ontology was uh, queued into that um, into that uh, Binance effect so that's why they are uh, highly di divergent uh, but key takeaway like key takeaway here is uh, XRP is traded on Binance and uh, and it's got a very high high divergence from many many of the coins so um, there you go there's your hedge uh and i think also probably that has something to do with the fact that uh xrp is is what xrp is used for right it's used primarily for like cross-border uh institutional transactions so uh probably prompts it to behave very differently from some of the other cryptos which are like store of value and stuff like that. So go check this this research out. This is on the Binance website. Uh, let me give you that website. It's uh, info.binance.com forward slash en forward slash research forward slash market search. Or I'm sorry, forward slash market research forward slash cluster dot HTML. And, uh, and it's there. Uh, I'm, I'm probably going to tweet this out here in a, in a minute. Um, but anyway, uh, yeah, so it says key takeaways using a correlation matrix along with hierarchical hierarch, 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 hierarchical clustering there there you go i got it uh, digital assets can be grouped into several sub segments um based on weekly returns large crypto assets such as bitcoin and ethereum exhibit highest correlations um while coins like ripple display lower correlation uh, Bitcoin forks like Golden Cash and Ethereum Classic and Litecoin as well uh, form single cluster where other potential groups uh, around uh, several different effects like the Binance effect that I was talking about. Co Coinbase listing effect is another one. Uh, and then privacy coins form another cluster. So uh, very, very interesting. Go check it out. Uh, it talks about algorithms, uh, divergence over the month. Uh, it goes into like uh, higher technical data offers conclusions and references very very uh, awesome article so I suggest you guys go and read that as soon as you're done with me um, so let's take a look at the chart so yesterday uh, I was talking about Yeah, yesterday I was talking about how um, uh, I thought we were gonna drift down into uh, the pit of this um, of this uh, triangular formation. We're still in this trend channel, uh, but I was thinking we we're gonna come down here and break out from down here. We actually crossed over shortly after I finished a stream last night, and um, and it, it was to give myself a little bit of credit. Um, we drifted outside uh on saturday right and saturday is a big buy day uh for the for big big boys and and strong hands come in and buy on saturday they buy up all the cheap crypto uh that's been sold by the weak hands you know because it's the weekend effect right it's like oh i'm gonna sell i'm gonna sell some crypto there's actually a cool music video um 
by Coin Bros on YouTube. You should check it out. Uh, called like We Can'ts or something like that. But it's the weekend effect, man. People uh, want to sell their crypto, get out, and then uh, go and party it up. And so, of course, Saturday is when the strong hands come in. Um, and so I think that's probably what we saw here. Uh, we saw the weekend effect take hold and we drifted out above this. But we're still within the trend channel. Uh, nothing incredibly abnormal. Um, we came up above this center line, bounced off of it, dropped back down, uh, came back up, fought with it for a couple of uh, one hour candles and then broke back up. And that's where we're at right now. Um, we're still going to be uh, ranging, li we're likely going to be ranging um, here uh, in between like 50. Here, let me give you a current range. So uh, between 52, 15 and uh, and uh, 56, 90 around there. So uh, we'll be arranging there uh, for the next few hours. I will come back for episode 49. Uh Maybe tomorrow, maybe in a couple of days, and we'll see how things uh, things uh, things go. But that's gonna do it for me tonight. Uh, I don't have anything else um, for you guys. But uh, if um, if uh, you have any questions, comments, concerns, etc., reach out to me on Twitter. I'm at Joel Benavi. That's J O E L B E N A V I D E Z. And uh, and that's gonna do it for us here at Block Squawk. So good luck trading. We'll see you guys later. Cheers.